Hi, and you're very welcome to your yoga with resistance bands uh, standing flow class. So in our session today, we will be primarily working uh, with standing poses. We will be sitting in line as well towards the, towards the end of the class, but primarily working on some of the um, strengthening poses that we can do uh, to build some strength and flexibility standing. Um, so for this class, you'll need your two long bed loop bands, your uh, long loop band, and that's in a, a stirrup here, and um, possibly just have two shorter ones um, uh, handy as well. We may use them a little bit later on, but less likely to need them for this class. And you might also like something like a cushion. Uh, to sit on, or a, or and maybe a blanket to uh, wrap yourself with for your uh, shavasana. So have your own music to hand. Uh, the, the computer audio doesn't seem to like uh, voiceover and music at the same time. So rather than having teeny music in the background for you, you can uh, select your own, and particularly have something nice and relaxing for your shavasana at the end. So if you want to take a couple of minutes to. Gather your bits and pieces. If you don't have yourself uh, already um, set up, you can press pause and then we'll get started whenever you're ready. So we're going to come to a seated position first of all for a short meditation to just ground us and root us into um, ourselves a little bit more fully before we start to move. So I'm sitting here in Thunder Monk. This is where I'm sitting back with my bum onto my heels, uh, so nice long spine there. If that's uncomfortable for you or a little bit, uh, a little bit too much for the knees, popping something like a bolster or a cushion underneath can just help to elevate you a little bit and make that a little bit more comfortable. Um, this is how I'm going to sit for the, the meditation. You might like to uh, do that or maybe come into something like an easy cross-legged, possibly up in a cushion as well. So just have your sit bones up in a cushion just to give you a little bit of height there for the, um, the hips. Or something like uh, sitting up against a wall with a nice long spine, your back fully supported, your head supported by the wall and the legs out in front of you. It can be nice for uh, a meditation practice as well. So choose something that's going to suit you. Um, apologies before we start, it's spring, it's hay fever season and I'm going to be a bit as we go as we go through, so I hope that doesn't interfere too much with your, uh, with your own experience. So get yourself into whatever sitting position is going to be the most comfortable for you. And take a moment or two really to get yourself set up so that you'll be nice and comfortable for the next few minutes. You'll be able to sit without the physical body calling to dis disrupt you or to um, to distract you. If it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, I invite you to do so. If you prefer to keep your eyes open, have your gaze long and low. So out towards the wall opposite or towards the floor opposite you. Maybe focus on one single point. And rather than just allowing distractions to come in or the mind to wander to things around the room, just try to narrow your focus on what we call a new bedrishti. If you're comfortable to have the eyes closed, just allow that. And pressing down with your hips, pressing down with your sit bones, lengthen up through the spine. And biting eyes open as across your heart space as the shoulders come towards each other at the back of the body. And then drop the shoulders away from the ears so that you get a nice long neutral spine nice spaciousness and openness in your upper body. Allow the chin to move very slightly in the direction of the chest and lengthen the cervical spine. Pressing down the sit bones again with the hips, just lengthen up through the spine, lengthen the crown a little bit more fully towards the sky. And then allow all of the muscles to settle. So letting gravity and the structure of body the supports of the floor beneath you do the work to hold you, allowing yourself to settle. 
And really taking a moment or two to land into your body, to allow all of your awareness to drop down from the mind, from thoughts, into the physical body itself. Notice the coming and the going of your breath. Notice as the breath comes into the body, the lovely expansion outwards of the side body towards the arms and the front and back body expanding out. And then your exhalation, so lovely settling back towards centre. Just focusing your awareness here on this gentle movement the gentle rhythmic exchange between body and breath for the next few moments. If your mind wanders, just gently escort your awareness, your attention back to the body again, back to the breath once more. Letting the breaths become a little longer, deeper, slower, fuller as the moments pass. And just becoming familiar with how you are in your body right now, how the mind is right now. Maybe any emotional content that might be showing up right now. And allow it all to place, all the space with you when you want for your practice. So I invite you to set your sankalpa, an intention for your practice. What would you like the energies of your practice to call in to support you both during the practice and as you move back out into your world afterwards? We're particularly focusing during the physical practice today on qualities such as building strength, flexibility, and balance. And these can be qualities that we can translate not just into the physical experience, but also strength, flexibility and balance are really important qualities to have mentally and emotionally in terms of navigating our external experience and navigating what's going on with, within. So just are there any of the qualities that you would like to call in, so we've been moving between effort and ease, We'll be moving outside our comfort zone, but learning to do so safely and not pushing ourselves more than feels good, feels safe within our bodies, learning to listen to ourselves and respond. Maybe we ask you to do that as we go through the class. Don't bring yourself to anywhere that moves you towards uh, the outer range of your, of your um, mobility right now that moves you towards injury rather than just towards uh, pushing yourself and building strength. We can build strength within our comfort zone, but if we go too far outside of it, we can move from building strength into risking injury. So really listening to yourself and modifying your practice to your own needs as we go through. So I invite you to take three nice, long, deep, slow, full breaths here. Really inviting the breath all the way down towards the base of the lungs. And then exhaling, releasing the breath fully again. Nice, long, deep, slow, full inhalations. And long, deep, slow, releasing exhalations. Nice long full inhalations again. One deep slow full exhalations. And then whenever you're ready, we're going to slowly let the light to move back in if your eyes have been closed. So just parting the eyelids, letting the light to come in through the 
lashes, then nice and slowly starting to lengthen your gaze out until you eventually come back towards a neutral position where your, your focus is forwards again. So we'll start by just inviting the shoulders up towards the ears and as we exhale, drop them down and release. Notice any impact that has on you. Shoulders up and then releasing back behind. And it tends to invite a sigh into the body. Inhaling up and exhaling all the way back around and behind. And then if you have anything underneath you, if you had a support for sitting, just moving that out to the side of the body. We're going to take just a couple of uh, limbering um, movements here before we, we come to standing. So if you first of all, we take a child's pose. So if you spread your knees nice and wide, so if you put the part ball wider, uh, the, the wider you go, the more stretch you get for your inner thighs. So you decide what you think works there. So your hands underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers nice and wide. And as you exhale, send your bum back towards your heels. Walk your hands away from you, as far as they want to go. Claw in with the fingertips, so spread the fingers nice and wide, claw in with the fingertips, and then invite the shoulders back towards the waist. Nice and slowly drift from side to side to take yourself to the mat until the elbows reach the floor. And you can release your forehead to the, to the mat. If the forehead doesn't want to uh, reach the mat, if your neck is feeling a little bit tight, you can just allow the head to hang. It's a nice stretch. <laughs> it's a nice safe stretch, not a strange stretch, a safe stretch there for your neck. Have three breaths here. And then as you inhale, coming back up on two or fours, take the body into alignment so that the knees are underneath the hip, hip distance apart, hands are underneath the shoulders, shoulder distance apart or a little bit uh, further forwards. If you um, have sore wrist, again, spread the fingers, go the fingertips, go around the tops of the feet. And we're going to just cat cow here for a couple of breaths. So exhaling, going towards the heels, arching the shoulders up towards the ceiling. And then releasing on your inhale, gentle engagement to make it to spine, not too much if you're pregnant. Releasing the shoulders and allow your gaze to look forward. So let me just float here, but not overextending. Exhaling in your own time into your cat. And inhale into your counter cat, your cow. Exhale into your cat. And inhale into your counter cat. And then take a little flowing wavy motion with the spinal wave here. So just shift sort of quite down uh, organically and with like a from shoulder to shoulder, maybe just moving the air around the wrists a little bit, moving the bone back towards the heels and take that in the opposite direction and just see what feels good for the body. So let your cat switch its tail, let your, your wave flow. Now we're going to curl the toes, walk our hands back towards our knees, back onto the uh, balls of the feet with the bones slightly lifted, and lengthen ourselves nice and slowly up to standing. So I'd like you to uh, reach for your, your two uh, stirrup bands, the longer ones, and we have a loop hopefully on either end, and if not, just um, roll the ends into a kind of a scrunchy ball that you can hold on to. We're going to start by doing a little bit of um, warming up for the for the arms. So two bands is double the strength. So use one band if you're working on building strength and uh, you're coming from a point of view where you haven't done too much work with your arms yet and you want to build that up. If you've been doing this for a while and you feel like you're, you've already got some nice strength and mobility in the shoulders, take two bands. So we just uh, develop the, the, the strength for you. And we're going to come to Tadasana initially, so um, a, a variation of mountain pose. So if you take your feet to the foot about hip width apart, or whatever distance gives you a nice sense of balance, lift and spread your toes, place them up to the mat, come up onto the balls of your feet for a moment. I'm just playing, that might be a balancing pose for you and then back onto the heels and then release yourself back onto the feet so that you feel like your weight is distributed across the four corners of the feet so that the, um, 
the, both sides of the heels and then we're going to go all of the, the big toe and, and the little toe. You're going to neutralize your pelvis. So if you have a tendency to stick your tailbone out behind you, then we're going to invite that towards the uh, towards the floor. For some of you, I can't demonstrate because I don't have that structure in my body that, that we tend to have more of an anterior. It's an anterior to more of a posterior tilt where your pelvis almost kind of tucks underneath. So we're really going backwards, in which case you want to just neutralize um, from that position there. Take a nice um, engagement into the legs and the core by hugging your outer hips in towards the center line of the body. And then bring down with the feet as you lengthen the crown up towards the ceiling. Let the shoulders drift away from the ears. And just have a breath or two here. So hold the balance so that they're um, maybe just past hip width apart. Your hands are just on the side of your hips and pull against them to activate the arms, to activate the, the core here a little bit. And you want you don't want to be pulling out way out to the sides. You really just want the hands to be resting quite comfortably on the side of your um, your thighs here, on the sides of the hips, and then you're just sort of pulling against that so that you get an engagement in the arms and the shoulders there already. And if you, you if you continue to hook the outer hips in towards the center line of the body, you'll feel a nice engagement there in your core as well. So your arms are working, your legs are nice and strong, your legs are working, and your core is engaged. Lovely. And then we'll soften the balance. So you have the loops on either hand. So scratching your face is not part of the um, sequence. So I'm encouraging not to do that. You can see hay fever is getting a little bit uh, confuffled at the moment. And we're going to hold the, the loops in either hand, take the arms out in front of you. So in line with your chest, and we're going to do some pull parts here as we inhale, lengthen up and out to the side here, and hold for breath. And as you exhale, nice and slowly with lots of control, releasing the hands back to where they started. And just ensure that you're not bunched up towards the the ears with the shoulders inhale open and exhale nice and slowly back towards center, keeping the arms as straight as is comfortable. If you need to do anything different with your elbows, your own body structure or any injuries, then mind yourself with that. Inhale open and exhale close. And then release the hands for a moment. Just take a little roll into the shoulders, maybe a little big up into the upper body and then we'll inhale and we'll take the bands a little bit higher. So to the top of the forehead or, or a little bit higher if that's comfortable in here, we're going to inhale, open, and you might find the bands come back behind you unless you have slightly longer arms and you can just go over the head without uh, catching the hair and then exhaling back to where we started. Inhaling, open, pulling the arms as far apart as you can and exhaling nice and slowly. So really slow, controlled movements have to build stability here in the joints, as well as flexibility in the muscles. So flexibility without stability is going to cause you hyperextension and injury. And it's really particularly not good when you have um, things like it increases the risk of things like arthritis coming in. We're just continuing with this for a couple of breaths. Stability without flexibility makes you quite rigid. So when we can get stability and flexibility into the body, we'll be nice and supple and we can move a little bit more comfortably. And then we'll take that all the way back down to the, to the thighs here just for a breath again, have a little bit of a wiggle, any kind of organic movement that you like here into this. And then we're gonna take the balance all the way up behind us and really slowly, I start to release the bands behind you now, really slowly here, continuing to pull against the bands. You really feel your biceps working, and you're rolling the shoulders there, the shoulder blades back towards each other. And then from here, we're going to open on the inhales and then the exhales, release nice and slowly back to center. The more slowly you work, the more that you can pay attention, inhaling up, the more slowly you can. Uh, the more you can pay attention to what you're experiencing and then you can avoid uh, popping in towards uh, overextending yourself. This is all when we move quickly. Momentum takes us too far. 
too quickly, too fast, too soon. And that's where we can cause a little bit of disruption and discomfort and then all the way back again. Lovely. So we're going to loosen up those bands again. Just make sure we're going to sit back around the hands. Just find different positions. You need to hold them slightly differently. And this time we're going to do um, sort of diagonal stretches. So we're going to take one arm up towards the ceiling, left hand up, right hand down, and then back towards center on your exhale, inhaling, left hand back, or right hand up, left hand down, back behind you, exhale back to center. And you'll feel your muscles working here, you'll feel your, your biceps, you'll feel your traps, and everything working here, and back and open and the band can come all the way back towards the chest and back so the beauty of the resistance bands is you almost can't go too far because they won't let you go any farther than the body will um, facilitate and the difference between just doing kind of this which is a passive stretch to try that that's very different is there is a tendency for the joints to kind of flare around whereas with the bands because we're moving against the resistance we stabilize the muscles really cling the fascia the tendons everything really comes into action and that's where you get your stability coming in and back and open and back and then we're going to take our little major edge twirl with it which is just a nice little kind of free flow around the body the stretching apart as the with the bands the hands and the bands as far apart as much tensile resistance and then we change the direction of that as much tensile resistance as you can as we go and this kind of seesaw we wind many kind of uh, motion is it's just nice a little bit of fun and back behind you all the way lovely and we're going to release the hands on one side and separate the bands so Take the hands onto the waist. Let's take the feet so that they're about hip or th so apart. Elbows back, shoulders nice and open. Find your uh, hip hinge crease here, and then as you exhale, just lengthen forwards, bringing yourself to a half fold here. So the crown of the head comes so it's in line with the tailbone. You feel nice lengthening there in your in your hamstrings. So from here, take a slight bend into the knees. <coughs> just posturing or sana in, yoking our way into to getting our set up and we're going to take both loops of one band onto the right foot to create the third loop here and then both loops of the other band onto the left foot to create the middle loop here with these knees bent and these are bent but trying to keep them above the ankles rather than sending them forwards. Nice long spine here and inhale, lengthen your way up towards standing. And we're going to do that a couple of times. So as you exhale, hinge forwards from the hips, allow the bands to help you to lower towards the floor. Nice long spine, crown of the head to the tailbone is one nice uh, long flowing column, energy channel, inhaling and lengthening up. I've taken my feet to a little bit wider than hip distance, I'm going to take them back into hip distance. You check out what feels good for you. So nice long spine here, legs into your Tadasana. And then exhaling forwards, nice long spine, bend the elbows a little. You can take the hands to the shins here, lengthen forwards with the crown of head and the heart space is beaming down towards the earth. And today is Earth Day. It's the 22nd of April, so it's up to the to the earth. Inhale, lengthening up. And exhaling one more time, all the way back down. So we're stretching out the hamstrings here with a nice release for the upper body. Now take a bend into the knees and at the belly, you meet the thighs. Release the hands to the floor, release the crown of the head towards the floor. Take a nice slow inhalation. Maybe straighten out the legs a little bit. And as you exhale, then a little closer to the thighs, kind of head down towards the earth here. When you're ready to inhale again, engaging your bands, and starting to lengthen up. And notice the point which which the bands actually become tense again, and where the effort comes to bring you back to standing. But that effort 
again it's helping with stability so we're going to have a little lateral stretch here so lengthen up crown the head towards the ceiling and as you exhale you're going to allow yourself to move out towards the left side so banana stretching here banana bending make sure this band is comfortable and that you your hold it. banana bending out to the, the side here so avoid collapsing forwards into it keep nice space across the chest Space between the shoulders, shoulder blades come together at the back of the body, and inhale and lengthen here. This is lovely for stretching out the side body. So the band on the left hand is helping, or the right hand is helping you towards the floor, and then you're resisting against the band in your left hand. Exhaling down, and inhaling up, keeping those shoulders nice and engaged, lovely spaciousness there being your. So from the heart chakra out into the space around you and then one final time to each side. So just stretching here, lengthening into the side body. Lovely. And then just have a little moment or two where you have a little bit of a, I don't know, a monster walk. It's kind of a little bit of a balancing exercise here as well. So again, keep the body nice and engaged. Your core is nice and engaged here. So nice strong legs. And the legs are pressing against the bands of the feet, so that helps to activate the, the leg muscles. And back out to the side. So when you take the weight from one foot to the other, you're into balance. And then, that's, that's good, just about to see, see how far can you come to the side before you, you lose your balance, or you don't want to be losing your balance whilst feeling balanced. And you saw there, I'm going to pass my, my end game a little bit. So, see the shape the body is making here, you're almost coming towards a uh, half moon variation. So if we had a half moon variation, we would have our hand on the floor, but it's a nice opening there for the thighs, nice balancing, and um, nice stretching into the, to the side body. Lovely. And then we we'll inhale forwards with this, so still balancing, taking the weight onto your right leg, or it doesn't matter if you're doing it on the other side, lifting your left foot forward, and all the way down, feel the thigh engaged there. Inhaling, shift the weight to the other side, lengthen forward. So using the hand to guide you, the band, the band is helping you up. Point the toes away, extend through the heel, flex the foot. Exhaling down. Next time we do this, we're going to point the foot and see about taking a little bit of a rotation into the ankle with it. So inhaling up. And then holding on the exhale while you take a little movement. And then inhale and then exhaling your way back to the back to the floor again. And then just really engage your tadasana again, your mountain alignment where you bring those shoulder blades back towards each other, feet hip width apart, hugging in the outer hips towards each other. Lovely lengthen the spine and close your eyes and have three breaths here. Really ground down through the feet, really lengthen the crown towards the sky. And just feel a little bit of activity there for your core. A little bit of movement. Internally, as energy flows, lovely. And then we're going to take a forward bend here again. So exhale, hinging forwards from the hips, taking the hands all the way down towards the shins, and then back up on your next inhalation. Exhaling down, and this time bend your knees slightly. Take your right hand to the middle of the space between the feet and maybe you can take the feet a little bit wider um, if you like here and see then about lifting and extending the band in the left hand so it's not going to come the arm is not going to come all the way up to the ceiling here unless you're a complete rock star but you'll feel a nice engagement there so my left leg is now straight i'm holding the band in my left hand and my right knee is bent to facilitate this exhaling back down and then to the other side, so taking the left hand to the middle of the space between the feet, using the right hand to lever up, and then just draw it to the side a little and look over that shoulder. And exhaling it down, we take it once more each side. So left knee uh, straight, left leg straight, left hand pulling against, twisting around to the side here. So your arms are working, your legs are working, you're getting a twist into the side body, onto the other side. 
exhale back to center and then inhale slightly bent knees all the way up to standing exhale Whew. have a little sigh and then take a nice full round of breaths with full inhalation and a full exhalation by now hopefully you really feel the energy the energy in the body starting to to flow so we're going to go back to balancing for a moment so if you take your weight back onto your right leg lifting the left foot but flex the foot and the knee is in line with your hip and then inhaling now don't pull it out to the side maybe take the band onto the inside of the knee and the thigh so that you can guide it out to the side and avoid doing what i'm doing here which is turning your torso around to the side so trying to keep your hips and your pelvis level facing forwards just have this gentle hip opener here you go as far as your inner thigh and your hip want you to go work with whatever you need to there for balance inhaling back to center extending out the leg again and then releasing back to the floor and then taking it to the other side so flexing that foot bending the knee taking the knee so it's in line with the hip your balance is onto the inside of your thigh here you're going to inhale and open one side might feel very different to the other Exhale and close. Inhale, extend, and then exhale and release. We're going to exhale on the next breath, all the way back to the floor, hands onto the shins, bend the knees, and then we'll take a little uh, we'll take a little chair pose here. So knees above the ankles. Take the hands onto the thighs for a minute. Slightly bent knees, knees above the ankles not forward towards the toes, to, to, toes, sorry, opening up the shoulders and looking forward. So then maybe we sit down a little bit more. We send our tailbone towards the floor. So we're not doing this, we're not taking our bum into the wall. We're kind of more as if we were about to sit back into a chair. And it's quite challenging. So you can use the hands almost to pull against the bands to help to lower you down. And then inhale, up to standing. Exhale, bend the knees, lower the bum, keep your spine nice and long. Inhale, up to standing. So really working with your core here. Exhale, and down, building strength in the thighs. And inhale, up here for your arms working. And exhale, and down. And inhale, and back up again. Lovely, really nice work. And then we'll come back down, exhaling. Knees bent, this time allow your hands to find the floor. Release the balance from the hands on the feet. And from out to the side, take the hands to the shins. Lengthen, straighten the arms. Lengthen your spine forwards into your half fold here. Exhale, bend the elbows, bend the knees, belly towards the thighs. And as you inhale, sweeping the arms up to the side engaging your core lifting yourself all the way up towards standing and exhaling back down again great job lovely so you can hear me getting a little bit breathless so that'll give you a sense of any sort of effort that you're feeling in your own body it is not just you it's the work and it's great because if you take a moment or two in between these movements and just breathe sorry pause for breath or take a breath you really have a sense of energy flowing you have a sense that your heart is working a little bit harder your blood is flowing within the body you'll be warmer but you also have just a sense of release i think um, in the physical body so we're going to reach for the, the booster band and start by taking the band on to start step hold the 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 knot in your left hand step both feet in and then you're going to take the the i suppose rather than having the band straight over both feet you're going to take it slightly over towards your right leg you're going to step your right leg through the band as if it's walked through a door and then pop this onto the thigh here onto your right thigh so I'll do that again because this one often confuses. So both feet on the band, lots of space here between the band. You can take it all the way up and stick your head underneath, but please don't. You're gonna lift your right foot, stick your right foot through it, and engage there. 
engage in a nice active pack. So we open out here again. So we practice this area with the arms to help us. We do it now just with the legs and little hip opener and balance. Inhaling out to the side. Exhaling round and down. Lovely. And then step that foot forward. I'm going to come sideways onto the mat to uh, just start to demonstrate this. Now, it's a little bit late to be telling you this now, but you could have a block or a couple of books here to support you with this. But I think that we'll manage without. So we're going to come first of all into a lunge. So for the lunge, you stepped back with your uh, left foot. The back leg is straight. The knee is, is, is straight, but keep it soft. So don't lock that knee and the heel is off the floor. Okay. And then your front leg, you want the knee over the ankle. Now, if this happens, if you are able to bring your knee past your ankle, it means that you need to give yourself a little bit more space because we never want that knee passing the ankle. It's not nice for the knee or for the ankle, for the ankle joints. And then you're looking forwards here. You want to sit down into it a little bit more. So bring your hips towards the, the floor. And notice that your left hip might want to kind of go out to the side a little bit, almost over to the edge of the side. So you're inviting your right hip and high back, your left hip and high forwards. Your front hip and high back, left hip and high forwards. And as I'm talking here, you'll be feeling the, the strength in the thighs building, you'll be feeling the back hamstring working here as well as we inhale, take the fingertips towards the ceiling. Lovely. Exhaling hands back to the waist. And then take your belly a little closer to your thighs. If you're pregnant, make sure you're giving yourself lots of space here. And you're taking your belly really onto the inside of the thigh. Come down as low as you like. You'll feel this hip activating. Again, don't let that hip out to the side or fall forwards. The hip and thigh is moving back. Take your fingertips to the floor. Looking forwards here. In your runner's lunge. Okay, and then we're going to have a little play here. So take the hands slightly forwards of your foot. Take the, foot, the back foot in slightly, uh, maybe half a step closer to, to you. And then take the weight onto that standing leg, onto your right leg. Lift the left leg. Take the hands to the floor and see if I take that leg a little bit higher, almost towards a standing split here. Straightening the arms, straightening the right leg. Bring that leg back leg, your right leg back. So that it's in line with your hip now. Lovely. And then the left foot back to the floor. Take yourself ooh, back up into your back up into your lunge. And you will need to step back a little bit as you go. So we went from a lunge there to standing splits from here to here and then back up again. Great. So we use the hands that time for a little bit of balance. This time keep your hands on the waist. Take your, your weight onto this uh, right leg, lift the left leg, and start to take the torso forwards, lifting the back leg a little bit. And you might take the hands behind you here. Take them to the floor if you need to. So this is coming towards, this is coming towards a warrior three. And you're pressing your left foot, take a moment to get your balance, it's not my forty today. You're pressing your left foot, into the band, lengthening forwards, and then step out of it. And just because I might struggle with balance today, doesn't mean that it's a challenging pose or going to be more challenging for you. It just means that's where I'm at. Uh, on another day, I might do that uh, very comfortably. So see how you get on with it. You might only just lift the leg very slightly. So we're going to come back to centre again. Take the uh, both feet back in, and then take this to the other side. So this time we're going to take the band over towards your, your left leg. You're going to step through with your left leg, and we'll just start and hook it on there. We're just going to start with our um, balance. So starting with a standing balance, inviting a little hip opening into it, engaging the thigh and the outer hip there, and hand back to centre, and then stepping forwards. Again, I'm going to take this to the side to, to, to demo it for you. So we're coming towards a lunge. So in the lunge, our back leg is straight, heel is off the floor. It's very different from if we were doing something like a warrior pose, you might have the, the foot in there, the back heel in. So back heel, your right heel is off the floor, your right leg is straight. You want to be able to bend your 
left leg without the knee passing the ankle. So if that's happening, give yourself a little bit more space, lengthen forwards a little bit. So that you can start to move your hips towards the floor. You can start to bring this thigh parallel to the floor. It's a nice back bend here in this as well. Keep that openness for the upper body. So back leg is straight, but don't lock it. So you just, you don't have your knee bent like this. Have it as straight as is comfortable, but don't lock the knee. Lovely. And then we're going to have hands towards the ceiling. And this is a high lunge. So again, you want to make sure that you're not falling out to the side with it. So your left hip and thigh is moving back and we're going to move right hip and thigh forwards to neutralize your, your pelvis. So it just means that you don't fall out to the side over that hip. Keep nice stability there for the hip joints. Lovely. Take the hands to the waist. Start to lower the belly towards the thighs. Taking, keeping the belly onto the inside of that thigh and bringing the hands to the floor. So looking forwards here. So this is your ready, steady, go position with your bunch, which you also are not going to do. We're going to step in a little bit with the back foot, take the hands slightly forwards to the floor, and then straightening the left leg, take your right leg up towards the ceiling. And you can go as high as you like with this leg. Some of you might be able to go straight up with your belly dancers. And uh, you can take the and uh, bend into the elbows there. Lovely. A little bit of bend that knee and come back up onto the lunge. We're going to take it back down and come back to our standing splits. And then we're going to bend the knee and come back up again. Lovely. So flowing in and out of that. And then we're going to try and take this towards a warrior three. So start to straighten that front leg. Start to take your waist forwards, so hinging forwards above the hips. So if I like that, like the half folds that we were doing earlier, this time the back legs behind you, take a very slight bend into this knee, and then think about lifting the back leg. Think about lifting the right leg. And maybe you come so that you're in line with the hips. The hands can be back, or they can be forward, or they can be resting on the floor, if you feel like you want a little Support along the way and then exhaling back to standing, back to a lunge and step it through. So really great work there for balance, for building strength in the legs, for building strength in the core, really strong for the hips, the hamstrings, the thighs. So tomorrow's just going to be insane. If you have anywhere to go, which you probably don't. And we're going to step out here of both of these. So again, just take that moment between effort and ease. Come back to your Tadasana, feet up apart, lift and lengthen through the body. But this time, rather than being really engaged, soften with it a little bit. Release that band, we we'll take the elbows, the hands to the elbows, and then we're going to hinge forward again, or half fold. And this time, I like the body to start to, so take a slight bend into the knees just to relax the legs a little. And just come into a dangle here, like a dangle fold where all of the activity, all of the activation is going out of that upper body. And you're just releasing it here, stretching around your sides. So flowing into the waist, going back into some of those muscles that we've already stretched and nice and warm. And then take a little <coughs> more of a bend into the knees, let your fingertips find the floor. One at a time, Cross the legs and find the floor here for sitting for a moment. So again, have a breath or two. Just find your alignment. Nice full inhalation. Nice full exhalation. Nice full inhale. And exhale. Lovely. So you can take the feet out in front of you and reach for your release of your belt again. Now this is very strong. This is the, <clears throat> the strongest of the, of the ones that we use. So we're not going to do a huge amount of work in terms of uh, pulling it apart. But we're just going to use it to help us with a little bit of um, a twist. So bring the band behind you. It's still doubled up. You don't need to uh, undo the, the loop. Take your hands into the other end. And then take it around your waist. Around your waist here while the hands come to the knees. So... Make sure there's lots of space in the moment. I'm just moving forward so that I don't crash into the, the mirror behind me. And you're going to take your right hand to your left knee, your left hand back behind you. Now, if you're pregnant, you, you do this the other way. You, you take your, 
you'll, you'll, you're just oh, you're not going to uh, twist against it. So if you're pregnant, if you take your left hand to your left knee instead of your right knee and twist around the side, so it's an open twist rather than a closed twist. If you're not, take the hand to the left knee, root down with the sit bones, lengthen up to the crown, and then have a nice twist there around right to the side. And you just have that extra feedback of the band there against the hips and the waist. Inhale back to center. And then either your open twist or your closed twist, depending on the space that you have available. And inhale back to center. Do that without the bands. Exhale and, and inhale back to center. And it just gives you a sense of the extra engagement that you have there in the body when you have the bones in place. And back and around, take a nice full inhalation. And sighing. Exhale. So we're going to take the blue band again over the head. So you put on your sash. Keep the um, knot sort of to the side rather than fully behind you. And then take the, the end of the band onto both of your feet. Now I'm just going to adjust the camera angle slightly here. Hello. So that it's more in position for floor poses. And we'll just start coming into the band angle here into Bankinasana. So, and if your band is a bit loose, you might be feeling a whole lot of extra. So you can kind of almost sit on the band, have the band on your pelvis or sleep or slightly underneath you. So you feel a slight engagement here. And if it's too loose and you're not feeling any extra supports at all, you might want to maybe wrap it, take it a little bit higher uh, or take an extra knot into it. So holding on to the ankles, the shins, Wherever you can reach without reaching forwards, so that you can have nice openness across your chest, you know, across the shoulders. We're going to press with the forearms into the inner thighs. And have a nice inhalation here. Exhale, relax the arms, lean back and soften. Inhale, opening. Exhaling, release. Inhaling, opening. And exhaling, release and soften. And you can always use the, the resistance of your body. So the arms are pulling against the shins here, just to give yourself a little uh, stretch out there. Take the hands onto the outer knees. Give yourself a little butterfly move here, just to balance that out. And then we're going to straighten out the legs. So take your balance behind you, so it's onto your pelvis or around your waist. Straighten out the legs here, and then we're just coming into a nice dandasana or a mountain pose. So, this is what I would look like from the side. So, some of you love this, some of you really don't love this. So, what you want to avoid in this is relaxing your body or collapsing your chest towards your, your pelvis. You want to avoid pointing your toes away. So, really press through the heels, paste your calves to the floor. Sit nice and tall, shoulders back, almost as if you were to bring your fingertips back. Be directly on the shoulders. Have that level of openness and engagement there for the chest and the upper back. And then have three breaths here. Now, if you're not feeling like your core is working, if you're not feeling like you could break a sweat if you hold this for too long, you might be leaning back, you might be landing that upper back, or your feet are pointing away, your toes are pointing away. So I don't want you to be in any discomfort. But do have the experience of the body being activated because if you get that experience, you're going to feel better in a moment when you let that go. Take a nice little inhalation and then exhale, bend the heels a little, bend the heels, bend the ankle, bend the knees a little bit, bring the ankles slightly closer to your bum. Take nice little inhalations and exhalations and take the hands back behind you. So fingers pointing forwards, wrists sort of underneath the, the shoulders, but you can have your elbows uh, slightly further back or slightly bent, and then stretch out your, tilt your toes forwards this time. And you're going to take a back bend into this by bringing your heart center up towards, so you're beaming your heart up to the sky, your heart center, your heart space, and you need to back bend into that there. And then depending on whether you want to do a little bit more work for the arms, you might lift the hips a little bit you now. And it feels like my band is going to go, so I'm going to the high of the waist. And if it does, it's fine. So point the toes away. And then maybe, 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 now your band might slide if you bring the hips 
more channel, which will already be up at that point. The toes now come to the floor and we're in the reverse plank here. And then exhale down. Bend the knees. If the balance is still, still around your waist, you can release it. If it's uh, flown away like mine has, you can just move it to the side as you come to lying. And we're going to counterbalance that back bend there with a nice forward bend by bringing your knees, bending the knees, bringing the thighs towards the belly, hugging the shins. Hold on with the wrists, so if you're pregnant, you're going to keep the knees wide. You can do that anyway if you prefer. Or let's hold on to the wrists and the elbows and have a little bold from side to side there. And maybe just start to sense into the relief of letting go. Relief of letting go is so nice. Rolly, rolly. Nice roll here from side to side. Massaging at the back. So apart from the hands holding on to the wrists and or wherever they're holding on, just relax the arms and let them again use the resistance of the pull against each other there. So minding your head, minding everything else, and then eventually taking the feet to the floor. And we reach for your red uh, or whatever colour band you have. If you just have a green one, uh, use a green one. We're going to take the knees towards the the belly, or you might notice it slightly forwards here as you take this just below the knees. So, not on the knees, you want your forehead over and behind, but just below the knees. And we start to bring the so bring the feet to the floor first of all, lift your hips and your um, uh, lift your hips and your pelvis and release the pelvis back to the floor, tuck in your shoulder blades one at a time and then lengthen the spine and start to pull the feet about hip width apart and start to pull the, the bands on the legs apart there. So that'll activate your legs and start to activate your core gently here again. Modify this for comfort and if you're pregnant you don't want to be too strong on the core. We're going to take it into a simple bridge. So hands to the floor, elbows alongside the body. So lift and spread your toes, and as though you're trying to pull your ankles uh, to the side as well, pressing your feet forward. So we have this kind of uh, opposite motion going with the legs to really activate. You're going to start to send your knees towards your toes and allow your hips to lift. And if that action of sending your knees towards your toes doesn't lift your hips for you, ask them to lift roll up along the spine. So that the weight is more onto the upper back and the shoulders and you can interlace the hands underneath the body. Now you can put another band on the hands here if you wanted to, another short band to pull against out into that. But you can imagine doing that. So if you take that arm so that they're underneath the sides of the body and press into the floor and drag out either side of the mat without actually moving, you'll get a nice engagement there. So can you hold for a moment longer? Can you lift a fraction higher? This is really great for the kidneys, really great for the, the thyroid, and then nice and slowly, vertebra by vertebrae. So release the arms, relax the arms, continue to pull out into the balance. So you still have activity in the legs and the glutes to protect your lower back. And then release the spine to the floor. Take and let the knees come together, take a nice foot innovation. And sound exhalation. Nice little inhalation and a sign exhalation. And then we're going to have a little rolling bridge for a couple of rounds. So take the knees back apart, pressing out, pulling out into the, the bands as you inhale. So again, all this pressing the knees towards the toes, pulling the bands, then the band apart, pulling the feet apart and pressing them forwards, so lifting the hips, slide up, roll up along the back, vertebra by vertebra for the length of the inhale. And then on the exhale, roll it nice and slowly back down to the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae for the length of the exhale. Inhale, roll up, all the way up along the spine and towards the shoulders. Exhale, roll down. You can stay here all day doing this, particularly if you find the rolling vertebrae by vertebrae. It's a nice massage for the spine. Inhale, up. See if you come a little higher each time. And exhaling down. Lovely, release the knees, let them fall in, take a nice full inhalation, soften the whole body. And exhale, 
just feel the difference between holding on and letting go. Lengthen the spine if you feel that you're bunched after that. Nice for inhalation and exhalation. And then walk the feet a little closer together. Take the knees up so that they're, and adjust your pelvis if you need to. You don't need to do the path like I did, but flex the feet. Heels are in line with the knees, knees are in above the hips, and then we're going to straighten the legs. Just come for our cooling here. So start first of all with the feet flexed to engage the hamstrings, pull against the bands. So until you feel your core engaged. So here you'll feel some engagement in the core. Here you'll feel a lot more engagement in the core. So find what's nice for you, for your thighs, for your lower, uh, for your, your, your entire abdominal you know, the neck is, is engaging here. Again, if you're pregnant, please don't, uh, don't uh, work too strongly in your core. We've been doing this all the way through, so you're probably not so strong at this point, but you just don't want to put yourself under any pressure. And that goes for everybody. Don't go past your, your, your uh, window of tolerance. Point the toes. And again, I'm keeping the legs apart here, just like really at the front of the body. Maybe take the arms into a fan pose or to the side into, so yeah, I said fan pose and I showed you cactus. So into cactus pose or to the side. The closer your thighs are to your belly, the stronger it is, but it can also get a little bit crumpy from the thighs, which is what I'm noticing. And we're going to go from here and again, if you're pregnant or if you're minding your core, if you've any abdominal discomfort, or maybe even if you're just menstruating, you want to like, um, I want to take it a little bit easier. Nice straight legs, bend the knees if you're minding any of those conditions. We're going to slowly extend through the heels and start to bring the feet, heels nice and slowly down to control to the floor. When you get there, take a nice little inhalation and relax, bring your feet together. And just have a couple of breaths here of absolute nothingness. Nice good inhalation. Sigh out. Cleanse, release, purify on the exhale. The inhale coming in. All the dirty is good, all the benefits of the strap, the practice of strengthening, the balancing, the toning, the building of flexibility. Lengthening, expanding, releasing. I'm going to have, invite you to have a couple more breaths there, and then you're going to bend your knees in your own time and just release that band. On the next, you like the feeling of the shavasana. Well, so you kind of almost in the shavasana pose, you're only coming up, but you don't need to. You might like to actually stay there with the band on the legs, but I think after having so much resistance working against the band so much, it's actually lovely to give yourself that sense of absolute freedom, absolute release at the end. So I do probably suggest let me take the, the band off. Now you're pretty much where you want to be for your final few minutes of meditation. So if you'd like to cover yourself with a blanket, if you want to change your music and put on your nice relaxation uh, for your meditation, uh, whatever you need to do. And I'm going to guide you for the first few minutes into your meditation. Just a body scan to release various body parts and then I'm going to leave you so you can continue to relax for as long as you like. And I really would invite you just to go deep, slowly and deeply into just a state of, of complete ease within. It's so, I think, much more rewarding. It's rewarding at the end of any yoga class, but when you've worked so hard and you've worked against all of that resistance and muscles have really activated, there's almost like that sense of um, extra release that you get, just like progressive muscular relaxation, but we exaggerate something and then we let go to create a sense of exaggerated release, and that flushes out so much tension out of the body. So, um, good job, well done. And you can repeat this class as often as you like. So, if you particularly enjoy the standing postures and uh, you want to go back to that, as, as, as often as you like. It's still very well balanced. Um, we're still working in all of the body parts and we do get, no matter what we do, we're always balancing out the entire body. And today was just a little bit more on our feet. So time to get back and relax there. So get yourself nice and comfortable. Let the entire body release, surrender to the floor. Let all sense of activity, all sense of effort, all sense of holding on work go. So imagine that you've, you have, you don't need to imagine, but that you've 
had your existence banned, so complete extension. And you're just coming back in now when you have that <laughs> moment to drop, moment to drop within. Relax your jaw. Soften your mouth, your lips, your tongue. Relax your forehead, space between the eyebrows. And let the entire face melt, let the entire head scalp melt towards the earth. Relaxing the shoulders, just checking that they've melted and drifted away from the ears. Relaxing the chest, front and back. Relaxing the belly above and below the navel and just making sure that there's no holding on here. That you're completely releasing out, relaxing out now. Relaxing your hips, your thighs, your glutes. And the legs fall out and release. And the feet, the ankles, the toes all soften and let go. Relaxing your arms from the shoulders to the biceps, elbows, forearms, wrists, hands, and each one of your fingers. Let every part of you relax, soften, melt. Let every part of you release and let go. Let yourself dissolve towards peace, towards ease. And just meet yourself, meet yourself as you are right now, mentally, physically, emotionally, energetically. Congratulate yourself on your effort and your practice. And now offer yourself the time just to be. And this is the most important part of the practice. Please do not skip any pose that you like, apart from your corpse pose, you should ask them. Because this is really where the body slows down, the nervous system has the opportunity to integrate the benefits of your practice. And where you really can set in the body and this is part of teaching yourself that effort is rewarded by ease. And some of that effort will be lost if you don't allow yourself the ease at the end. So the ease actually is where the body goes into rest and repair. And that's what does the work then to we stress the muscles, we stretch them, we strengthen them. And this is where the body then goes back into the, the RR cycle. And that's what actually really kind of helps to embed that strength. So don't cheat yourself out of, of your relaxation. So remembering your sankalpa and just calling in anything that serves your highest good with every inhalation, releasing with every out breath, anything that's no longer serving you. Following the inclination of your breath and allowing a sigh whenever the body feels like sighing. Let your breaths be long, deep, slow, and full. And allow yourself to stay here for at least another five minutes. If you'd like to stay for longer, if you drift off to sleep, just consider that all part of your practice, the icing on the cake. Take care of yourself. Stay well. Remember, you can repeat this class or any of the other classes as, as often as you like. And if you'd like to practice a few times during the week, maybe pop in a restorative practice uh, in there as well, just to keep your, your overall system in balance. It's really good to, um, to supplement strong active practice with, with softer, more relaxing, more releasing ones, just to keep us um, balanced and to help with that rest and repair that I talked about. So thank you very much. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for joining me. I still miss you all. I wish I could see you in person. And hopefully we're moving closer to that, whatever it might be. So stay well. Namaste. And see you back soon. <laughs>